This program is paid for by Innovative Medical Associates. All opinions or statements expressed on the program are solely those of Innovative Medical Associates or their guests and do not reflect the opinions of WPHT or Odyssey. Talk Radio 1210 WPHT, WPHT HD, WOGL HD3, Philadelphia. Now, Health Watch. Featuring Dr. Molly Fantasia, the PhD doctor and founder of Innovative Medical Associates, with valuable information that could help you improve your quality of life. Now, Health Watch. Good morning and welcome to another edition of Health Watch. Every Sunday, 8 till 9, right here on Talk Radio 1210 WPHT. I'm your host, John DeMassey, with the one and only Dr. Molly Fantasia, the PhD doctor, the executive director and the founder of Innovative Medical Associates located in Marlton, New Jersey. And what do we talk about here on the show? Well, we talk about your health and specifically how it relates to Dr. Molly and her practice and what she can do for you and how she can help you and your family improve your overall quality of life. That's the mission statement, and we do that right here every Sunday from 8 till 9 here on Talk Radio 1210 WPHT. The number here in the studio, if you have a question or a medical challenge for Dr. Molly, 855-839-1210, 855-839-1210. That's the number. And at any time during the course of the show, you feel free to call in with a question or a medical challenge. And a, a very good morning to you, Dr. Molly. Hey, John. Well, we better hunker down, everybody. Stay safe today. Yeah, we're going to get we're going to get hit with rain. <laughs> that's, Wait, that's for sure. Rain and wind. Yes. Yeah. But a good day to stay in and get healthy. I agree, Jack. Uh, okay. Um, I wanted to talk about today, before we get into what you do, talk about your journey, uh, how you came to this, because you're a traditional uh, trained, uh, trained. Can, I yeah, mean, you, you, yeah. you, you came right right out of the, right out of the chute, right, and you were trained and, and right, there you clinical go. chemist, yeah. There you go, and all of a sudden. A medical well, challenge happened, and right. tell us okay. from there. My own, my own challenge happened, and I've got to tell you, I was young. I mean, obviously, listen, John, can you believe you and I are doing this show at least 20 years, and I've been doing this for 27 years in October. Yes. Isn't that hard to believe? It is. It and is I know, I've know i known you at least 20 of those 27 That's right. years, right? That's right. So, yeah. I was, I was 10 when you knew Yeah, that. yeah, so was I. <laughs> well, I have to say the truth. But when we think of it, and, and, and you too, when we think about how we get to be supportive of these kinds of therapies, generally I find that people get supportive of these kinds of therapies because of their own journey. Usually it's a serious kind of condition. It could be uh, metabolic in terms of diabetes that is out of control or cancer, more likely cancer or cancer uh, type. Uh, syndromes, these kinds of things, and some genetic uh, syndromes I've seen. But for myself, it really was a diagnosis that I don't talk about much because I really don't want to put it in the air. That's the game. I say you keep keep your mind clear of what happened to you and focused on your present condition, your health, how you're doing. So when I looked at the alternatives out there, which include conventional, I did do some conventional. I had surgery. So I removed the culprit, got it out, and I had surgery. And that was something I tell my patients now. If you can have, if you have a cancer and you can have it out, get it out. Bottom line, though, I didn't like what else was out there to do post the surgery. And I looked around, and I, at that time, even 27 years ago, when you looked around, you realized that most people who had um, what they considered, quote, unquote, Uh, very serious conditions, if not terminal, right? Back 27 years ago, most people thought all kinds of cancer diagnoses were terminal, period. You had to go through the chemotherapy and uh, radiation or whatever was out there. Bottom line was I looked at that. I looked at my lifestyle. I looked at how young I was, and I started to do the figuring like they talk about, you know, looking at risk versus reward, and where do I, what do I do? Well, I found out that the European studies were doing a lot of things in women's cancers and cancers, period, all through the, uh, the world in other areas. I mean, I'm not talking about third world countries. I'm talking about the countries, first world countries like us. In Italy and Germany in particular, um, they were doing so many avant-garde things at that time, including medical hydration. I mean, when you look back and you see the studies from the 1950s talking about 
the power of vitamin C, one of God's wonderful ingredients, and how it helped people, you had to look at that and say, okay, well, even if the figures lied a bit, even if they lied, which, which, by the way, we know my good friend who's no longer with us used to say, figures lie and liars figure. That's right. Okay. So even if that's the case, you know, uh, you had to look at that and stop for a moment and say, okay, what about quality? It certainly seemed to me that utilizing the more natural ingredients actually help people with their quality of life, whether it cured the problem or not. At that point, we weren't talking too many cures. Now, we know we can get many conditions under control, and that then helps your quality of life. So really, that's the basis of how I got into this. But finding the information was very difficult back then. Did you feel as though you, I mean, you were going down a path that maybe wasn't the right path? I mean, Well, did I feel like, you know, well, certainly was different than most people who come out of uh, traditional scientific training would advise, but it wasn't. I think the most difficult thing was to actually get the surgeon to help me. It was a gentleman who, by the way, I'm treating his wife right now. Isn't that an amazing thing? What goes thing? around comes around, Well, right? I don't know if that's karma or not, guys. I don't want to get into that, but I will tell you what was interesting. She said... If he had known, he, he unfortunately passed away with a serious illness, um, and and he was a GYN surgeon, but it was very interesting because she has subsequently told me, if he had known I was doing this, she said, he would have been jumping ship to come on over. Isn't that interesting? Because he himself had a serious condition, and they traveled to Germany to get treatment. Isn't that amazing? Yeah. It's an amazing story. It makes but me. Did you think that this would work? I mean, well, I obviously I, I did. Yeah. Obviously I thought it was worth the, the shot. And the thing is, for me, it was more terrifying. I was young. I was recently married. It was much more terrifying to um, look at the conventional treatments. And even if they worked, the kind of condition I'd be in afterwards. That was more terrifying to me than the fact that um, I, I had it. Maybe I didn't have a chance of staying around for 20 years. And look, in the end, John, my belief is God is the creator. He knows when we come in, and he knows when, we, when we're when we going out. He's the man. So let's talk about what you do and, and sure. where that journey led to this. Well, and, and uh, into what is this? medical hydration. I utilize, first of all, I have a group of like-minded uh, primary care providers who believe the way I do. We want, if you need medication, by the way, I, I never was opposed to taking medication. I just want to say this. I'm not opposed now. I wasn't opposed 20 years ago. When you need medication, you've got to take it. You don't just throw away your medication because you decide in your head you don't want to take it anymore. And God knows I've seen my share of oh, those. Yeah. You know that. Yeah. But here's the thing. We believe that if there are ways to reduce the amount of the medication you need to effectuate the change and still maintain a high quality of life, that is the best, me best method for you. However, I want to caution that by saying I have many patients who have cancer patients who absolutely say they're not doing anything conventional. They may do the surgery, and sometimes I have to lean on them to do the surgery, but they may do the surgery, but they don't want to do anything post that. And I have one very well-known patient, as you know, who's been with me for many, many years, and that's Pam. Um, and, um, you know, I can't say that, but again... You've got to look at your total lifestyle. So here's the thing. This isn't holy water. What I do is not holy water. It's not voodoo water. It is uh, the way to deliver nutritional supplements to you in a therapeutic dose that can help you maintain your quality of life. That's it in a nutshell. It is not about, and we use a combination. We do not throw away the medication bottle. If we need to do medication, we also believe, and this is conventional at this point, medication delivered through medical hydration is a well-known uh, fundamental process and therapy in, in conventional medicine. And the question is, what is a therapeutic dose? Ha, ah, there it is. Well, you have to get enough of the constituent that actually has the therapeutic uh, 
uh, the therapeutic ingredient in it to deliver the thing to effectuate the change. For example, in frankincense, you need to look at boswellic acid. Boswellic acid is the convent, is the actual constituent that works in the frankincense. You need to look at that. So that was the biggest challenge for me 20 years ago. It's still a big challenge to today because therapeutic doses depend on where you are in your continuum of care outside the clinic, where you are, how long you've had the condition. Um, is the condition secondary to something else? Are there multiple problems going on or just one? And I can tell you therein lies how we approach each and every patient. We are coming up on our first break of the morning. Boy, the time flies when you're having fun. It's Health Watch here every Sunday, 8 till 9 on Talk Radio 1210 WPHT. Dr. Molly Fantasia is here the Ph.D. doctor, the executive director, and the founder of Innovative Medical Associates located in Marlton, New Jersey. 855-839-1210 is the number. And we always tell you to call in early because then we can really take the time to, uh, really, Dr. Molly can delve into your problem and try to help you out with that. 855-839-1210. That's the number here in the studio. I'm your host, John DeMassey, with Dr. Molly Fantasia. We are coming back with more of today's Health Watch after these words we are back here on health watch and as always operators standing by right now at innovative medical associates and they are there to take your call if you have some questions you're a little bashful you don't want to go on the radio well you can call the operators 856-489-0505 again 856-489-0505 and what you do what you really should do when you call them is schedule the initial consultation with Dr. Molly. It is complimentary, doesn't cost you anything, and you will learn a lot about what Dr. Molly does and about how it can help you potentially solve your problem. But all you have to do is call and make that appointment, 856-489-0505. That's the number. And our website, InnovativeMedicalAssociates.com, InnovativeMedicalAssociates.com. That's the website. A lot of good information on that. It is Health Watch every Sunday, 8 till 9, here on Talk Radio 1210 WPHT, the live version of the show. And if you have some questions for Dr. Molly, 855-839-1210 is our number here in the studio. We uh, want to talk, just to wrap up what we were talking sure, about. Sure, sure. You want to explain to folks the difference between well, a spa and, and what you do. Well, absolutely, because... We have to look at medical hydration as just that. It is a medical um, modality. And again, I sort of alluded to that when I said, you know, in in many settings, whether it's the urgent care setting, whether it's uh, the emergency room, in fact, the emergency room more than ever, the first thing they do is put an IV in. Uh, and, and certain other types of facilities, we all know that hydration, meaning, meaning medical hydration, meaning utilizing an IV treatment to deliver medication is normal. It's, it's way past having a stigma involved, okay? But utilizing medical hydration using natural substances is relatively new. And so, unfortunately, because it was, uh, you know, sort of uh, coming into the forefront in the 21st century, uh, lots of spas jumped on this in order to improve skin tone, that kind of thing. Bottom line is this. Do I, am I against that? No, I've been approached by numerous people to, to help them develop um, the hydration clinic. Bottom line is that isn't what interests me. What interests me because of my history is how do you utilize this God-given modality, meaning fluids, how do we utilize them to transport more natural substance and also medications in an amount that is necessary to effectuate the change from person, from person to person and also allow them to maintain a quality of life. That has been my focus from day one. And it all started with me. Okay, selfishly, it started with me. And you talked about that at the beginning of the show. Right. And so that is my focus in our clinic. There are a million traditional recipes for the delivery of certain vitamins. No problem. I have no problem with that. But 
that isn't enough because there are synergies within certain vitamins that are not addressed in any of those. We have uh, many protocols that do just that, address the synergies, address what kinds of things can and cannot be actually placed in the medical hydration. And more importantly, the focus of what it is we want to do. When I'm doing a patient who has cardiac problems, of course I'm using chelators. Of course that recipe, you know that recipe's been around for 20 years. You know about it. I walked more people through it. But what they didn't have was they didn't have the knowledge of what to add to that recipe and how to add it to improve cardiac health. And that was important to me. And we should mention also you have medical doctors. Docs. Of course I do. They're on staff. I have two. Right. You have two. And, and so a, a spa doesn't have that. Well, maybe not. Generally the, generally, the guy never comes in. And, you know, I, you know, bottom line is this. And, and that's okay. Listen, I want everybody. I don't want all the spa people to get together and, and be angry at me. I think that has a place in, in our uh, society. It's a good thing. It's better than nothing. It's good to go in and get your well care. I have no problem with that. But don't think that you're getting well care as related to what we do when we really want to effectuate the change. I had people come to me this week and say, well, you can get vitamin C cheap. Okay, God bless you. You're not going to get my vitamin C cheap because my extracts are so unique and we're using our compounding pharmacy. We're using our compound. My love of compounding pharmacists goes way back. Okay. So again, you can't equate what I do to the spa-like uh, protocols. Your protocols are mine. Are yours. Absolutely. And you develop facility. them. Well, along with my docs. Them. With my docs. Absolutely. So this is not the, the same thing as no way, what they do. No way. And you'll notice, you can notice that from day one, depending on what you're coming in to our facility for. And I want to reiterate something. Don't just look at the color of the bag, okay? You may have overlap of some things that give it that color, but that's not enough. What about what else we do for the patient? When we're looking at things that when they bring in all their vitamins, all their minerals, all their medications, and we look at all of this and my wonderful nurses say, oh, look, Dr. Molly, look at this. Oh, Dr. Pat, look at this. Oh, Dr. Linda, look at this. How about all that? How about when they're looking at that and we then put together a protocol for them outside the facility? Think you're going to get that at the spa? Doubtful. No, no, because because they just don't have the capacity to do that. Correct. And the bottom line is this. When you come into our facility, you are coming into a licensed primary care facility. I must tell you that Donna, who's one of my nurses, uh, uh, actually I would call her our chief nurse administrator, she's been with me uh, uh, now for since she retired from the state of New Jersey. So you can be sure that safety is paramount in our facility. I mean, we have everything we need uh, in terms of a problem. And believe it or not, folks, let me tell you something. You can have a problem taking fluid in. That's the other thing that gets to me. You know, you do need to have people there who can respond to an emergency. And I can tell you that you're well cared for at our facility. And, and emergencies don't happen too often. Uh, no, <laughs> no, no. But they do. They can and do happen. And they can and do happen at a spa, too. Don't yes. kid yourself. So the bottom line is here, you, you want people to understand that you're not a spa, right? that you're a medical facility, and that your protocols, you won't get them anywhere else. Well, you're not going to get the way we deliver what we deliver, absolutely, or get the constituents, that how we have the constituents. I'm a big believer in, again, utilizing utilizing medical hydration to effectuate the change because it's the quickest way to deliver these nutrients to certain areas of the body that need them. And that effectuates the change, folks. So you need, look, it all goes back, it goes back to Hippocrates. Let your food be your medicine. There it is. 
Let your food be your medicine. We have gotten away from this in our country, right? Our food's adulterated. Yes. We have more and more things in the food, enhanced flavors. Uh, you know, it's just insane. You know, that's why I really enjoy working with a lot of the nutritionists who have PhDs, uh, like my friend, Dr. Carr, who was on a few weeks ago. I mean, looking at food as a medicine, looking at these things and saying, oh, wow. And I think she, I really took a hit when she said, you know, Dr. Molly, that's, you're the reason why I don't refer people out for medical hydration. I said, what do you mean? She said, because nobody's doing it like you. And therein <laughs> lies the issue. She said, they go in and they get some manufactured vitamin C and they think, oh, that takes the place of good nutrition. What you do is enhance good nutrition. And that's really important. That was very it's, important to me because yes. I respect and admire these folks. We should ask the question, and I always ask this, does this work? Oh, yeah. Oh, yeah. What you need to realize is it's not going to work the same for everyone. You're not going to get the same outcome as quickly as someone else, but you will have an improvement in your quality of life. I can say that with absolute certainty, even people, and look, John, you've been there. You're my patient. This is why you do the show. Yes. You do the show, not because I pay you, right? <laughs> why do you do the show? Because it's, I, I, it, this works. Right. <laughs> and on, on, for all for several of your comorbidities, and therein lies the rub. Yes, it works. It, we, we can show you in blood work, that's, that's quantitative data. But more importantly, I like to say, look at my patient population. You can't take their minds, okay? They're listening to this station. They're thinking people, yes. right? Come on. Yes, and I will say that you've been very busy lately. Yes. And people come from all over, and they talk to me, and they say, oh, you're the guy on the radio. Oh, yeah, I love <laughs> yeah, you're. Oh, yeah, I, well, I listen to you all the time, and I heard you. Oh, it's fa a fascinating show. Yeah, yeah. And they just talk about the show right oh, yeah. <laughs> and, and you know what else is interesting they know that you are you're you're you've hosted shows in other areas and they know you have a show right now that's ongoing in another area people know this they know about you so you're your own personality but the point i'm making is that what we do we do because we knew it worked for people you know nobody's gonna you know, just get on and say, oh, yeah, blanketly, something works. I don't believe that. I wouldn't do it, and neither would you. No, and, and you have the data to show yes, people. Yes, sure. And we talk about the initial consultation. That's important. It but is. You, you can show them in that consultation. I can, and I, more than that, I can show them the studies. Today I, I'm going to talk about an interesting topic, but you know what, John? I have 50 studies that can show people what, what they do. I did it this morning, okay? And I, I, I just amazes me how much data is out there about nutritional medicine. Ah, by the way, I don't know if you saw my recent book on nutritional medicine. It's the third edition from uh, a doc out of New York who I really love and respect. And he wrote me a wonderful note and he said, you've bought every edition. <laughs> I said, <laughs> yes, I have. And I'm trying to read every edition. And the most amazing thing is he has this set up as a conventional medical or scientific book. In other words, by system, by disease. And you've got to look at this and say, wow, look at all the new data supporting medical hydration. And I am 100% in the camp that says medical hydration should be a part of everyone's treatment plan. And with that, we are coming up on the halfway point of the show. It is Health Watch Sundays, 8 till 9, here on Talk Radio 1210 WPHT. Dr. Molly Fantasia is here, the PhD doctor, the executive director, and the founder of Innovative Medical Associates, located in Marlton, New Jersey. If you have a question for Dr. Molly, we have some open lines, 855 855- 839-1210 is the number here in the studio, 855-839-1210. Dr. Molly Fantasia again is here, and I'm your host, John DeMassey. We are coming back with more of today's edition of Health Watch right after these words. We are back here on Health Watch. Operators standing by right now at Innovative Medical Associates. And the number, 856-489-0505. Eight five six four eight nine zero five zero five. The website innovative medical associates dot com. Innovative medical associates dot com. Check that out. A lot of good information on that as well. 
It is Health Watch every Sunday, 8 till 9, here on Talk Radio 1210 WPHT. Dr. Molly Fantasia is here, and she is ready to talk to you. Our number here in the studio, 855-839-1210. And now we're uh, going to get another education from Dr. Molly. Well, I don't know the, about l- from, you know. L- lymphatic system. Well, the lymphatic system, I you know, I want to relate that to my patient you know i have a wonderful patient she comes up from uh wildwood she's a nice nice lady can you imagine she comes up once a week she has a problem with mast cell activation and you know you've heard me talk about that before and that means her white blood cells are always in overdrive etc and for her it not only it gives her some uh pain, et cetera, but really more importantly, outwardly rashes and these kinds of things. So I'm always thinking about her. So I had to think about this globally in terms of our lymphatic system. People ask me about the lymphatic system all the time. You know, I've spoke a few weeks ago about plasma, right? Every day there are about 20 liters of plasma, the liquid part of the blood that flows out of the tiny pores in the thin walls of our capillaries, right? Imagine, just imagine our lymphatics working like this. Water seeping out on a sponge, right? Where does that all go? Well, <laughs> it actually it actually seeks out, it delivers an oxygen, very important, and nutrients to the tissues surrounding each of those capillaries. And the capillaries soak that up like the sponge sponge and while leaving behind what waste waste right waste so you know how your sponge gets sticky and that kind of thing well that happens and so what happens is we want a healthy blood system our body's lymphatic system helps filter out our waste products and abnormal cells from this fluid so you see it's very important it's a closed system and it's very important it also helps the body this is interesting travel through the walls of the capillary to be absorbed guess what it works in the intestines to absorb molecules and transfers back your fatty acids etc which are too big that all occurs in the uh, in the intestine and it protects our body most importantly from invaders it's it's our immune system it helps our immune system and it releases the lymphocytes the type of of white blood cells and other immune cells. And it looks for and destroys things like bacteria, viruses, parasites, fungus, anything, including toxins that enter the body. That's why I think about this in terms of her, because I believe she has an environmental issue that developed. But here we go. The plasma does this. Well, where is the lymphatic organs? Well, we know as we were kids, right? We know that it's around the body. We knew about our adenoids and tonsils being part of the lymphatic system, yeah, when didn't we? we? Were kids, yeah. When we were kids, what did they do? They hit us with antibiotics till we wanted to kill ourselves, right? That back in the day. And eventually the docs would do what? They'd take out your tonsils, right? Well, they were taking out part of your lymphatic system. And they knew it, but they felt like it wasn't important. And one of the things that we found through the years now is how important these things are. You notice now that's out of favor. Yes. They don't necessarily take the kids' tonsils out unless it's pretty bad. The other thing is we hear a lot about the spleen, right? Like you don't need your spleen. If you're in an accident and you have a damage to the lower tract and, you know, the left side under the ribs above the stomach, well, we'll just take out the spleen. Well, they're not inclined to do that so much anymore either, right? Because the spleen filters bloods and removes cells that are old and not working properly. So again, it also helps keep the red blood cells where they should be healthy. Um, the lymphatic system is important in the bone marrow, in the thymus, because the thymus is very important because it helps with T cells that help the body fight off. And of course, the lymph nodes, which are the small uh, bean-shaped glands that monitor and cleanse the lymphs as it filters through it, right? And we know that many times they have to be taken out because they claim that the cancer cells are in there. Now, that's an interesting thing because sometimes I have heard a very avant-garde physician say, well, you know, we need to do the surgery, in particular for the breast surgery, but he says, sometimes I wonder about how many lymph nodes they take out in, in patients. Now, he's an oncologist who believes in some of what I do. 
So um, they are really, the lymph nodes there are closely connected chains, right? And you can feel the lymph nodes throughout your body and your skin. That's why I think about this particular patient and her rashes could be overreaction in the lymph nodes. So what we have to look at is the vessels, right? The tubes that really form this network. And the lymphatic capillaries are ultimately connected to the larger ducts in the body, which is some of the organs, I think. But the most important thing I want to say is, okay, if you have swollen lymph nodes, is it a primary infection, like like an infection, inflammation that cancer causes? Or it, it can also enlarge um, the lymph nodes for less uh, virulent infections, although just as a pain in the neck to most people, like mono and viruses, strep throat, right? But, you know, this is an inflammatory condition. Do you think that maybe some of the things we deliver in medical hydration might help inflammatory conditions? Yes. If you've been listening to my show forever, you know yes. I believe that inflammation is a problem. Now, swelling in the accumulation of the blockage, that can happen from damaged vessels and nodes. That's the lymphedema that people speak about. Not necessarily swollen lymph nodes just being the problem. So one of the things I take very seriously is making sure that the lymphatic system is working properly for my patients. Be they come in from autoimmune disorders, because why? You need to have those white blood cells go after some of these disorders, whether they come in for the lymphedema because of breast cancer. Again, I'm looking at how do I work this and not give a patient what they perceive is too much fluid. That's the big perception I get all the time. Well, as luck would have it, I actually looked over in PubMed and some of the medical journals, and it really shows us that dehydration can lead to impaired lymphatic system. Dehydration. Wow. Okay? That also can show that nutrition and nutritional supplements can really aid in lymphatic drainage. Now, I'm not saying that medical hydration is the only thing a patient needs to do when they have impaired lymphatics and they have maybe, particularly in the breast cancer patients, they know that you can go after a a specific type of physical therapy that is very light to the touch. It's a very interesting therapy that women are doing. In fact, I have a nurse volunteer who does it all the time. And you can also use compression. They have compression instruments that help the patient drain the lymph nodes. But I'm saying that's one part of the lymphatic drain. Don't we, shouldn't we be looking at enhancing the action of the lymphatic system for lots of these patients? Because they already have an impaired drainage issue, right? The answer is yes. So what can help them? Also, I want to say something that Dr. Molly does every week. I believe in utilizing power plates. You know, the power plate, I have a power plate in the office, right? Yes. And I actually do 20 minutes on a power plate at home as well, every day, as well as walking. Why? Exercise, we know, moves the lymphatic system. And we need to feed the lymphatic system with what? polyphenols uh, that target inflammation, anti-inflammatories. Believe it or not, John, B vitamins, very, very important. In fact, the particular BB4 that is man-made is used as a drug in many, many cases to help this lymphatic system drain. Uh, Folic acid, very important. Folate, rather, folic acid. Uh, other B, certain bees in certain combinations, and astragalus. I believe that's an herbal preparation. And there are many other things like grapeseed extract that can help the lymphatic system. And why do I want to do it? Because it's important for the lymphatic system to work as well as it can within the framework of your condition. Because why? We need those we need those cells to go after the invaders that are causing us to have symptoms that then cause our quality of life to go down. If you had to 
advise patients as to ways to manage your lymphatic system, what would you tell them? I would tell them that they need to do many things. Lymphatic massage would be one of them. And I'm a big believer in it. And there's certain certain physical therapists that can do that. And I would get them to that person. I believe that some of the other things that we need is we have to look at exercise. Walking is very, very important. That's one of the things I tell most of my people. If you can walk, that's a good exercise. Yoga. People who do yoga do well. I believe in that. Uh, I believe we shouldn't block the fluid flow. One of the things I tell people when they're sitting in a chair is what? Do not cross your legs. Right. There's something else, right? We shouldn't carry bags, heavy things on an arm that's affected with lymphedema, right? So if a patient has lymphedema, and should we insert the IV in an lymphedema arm? No, no, right? We can cause some problems, right? You should wear a little loose clothes, a little more loose clothing. Um, you should use the compression stockings if you need them, right? You should manage your diet, right? One of the things that I'm big on, I'm helping a patient right now. She's already, she's been on our diet program and she's losing weight. So there are ways and we have to focus on anti-inflammatories. So it's not enough to just say, let's limit salt. No, because sodium is necessary. You see, it's on the list for your comprehensive yes. blood work, right? So obviously you need it, right? And we also should be looking at healthy skin care. Now that's crazy, right? You'd say, why? Because what can happen is if we don't watch and we're prone to these skin infections, what happens? That can cause a problem in your lymphatics, right? To swell up. So you want to use healthy, healthy moisturizers, like some of the things, and I'm not promoting mine. There are other good ones out there, but you want to look at using more natural ingredients. So again, you really have to look at managing the obesity, eating right. You have to watch blocking the fluid flow. And I think if you do this, I think you will help your your problem with your lymph system. And again, remember, the lymphs are going to be affected from surgery, right? Yes. Trauma, right? You have to have, you have, if you have to have a mastectomy, if you feel like that's the right way for you to go, then you think about it. You probably might lose a few lymph nodes. The question is, again... It's always a question of what's appropriate for the patient. Radiation can do it. We know infection can do it. And you know what else is interesting? Rheumatoid arthritis can also impair your lymph nodes. Okay, well, we'll stop you right there because we've got to come up on our, our final break of the morning. It is Health Watch every Sunday, 8 till 9, the live version here on Talk Radio 1210 WPHT. Dr. Molly Fantasia is here, the Ph.D. doctor, the executive director, and the founder of Innovative Medical Associates, located in Marlton, New Jersey. I'm your host, John DeMassey. We still have time to take your calls. If you have some questions or a medical challenge, you want to run by Dr. Molly, 855-839-1210 is the number here in the studio, 855-839-1210. We're coming back with more of today's edition of Health Watch right after these words. We are back here on Health Watch. Operators standing by right now, and they will be there well after we leave you at 9 o'clock. They don't go home. 856-489-0505. That's the number. 856-489-0505. And when you call, you want to schedule that initial consultation with Dr. Molly Fantasia. And, of course, that's where you'll get a lot of the information that you need as to whether you uh, want to move forward with the, the, the decision to uh, take the treatments that uh, Dr. Molly offers you. 856-489-0505. That's the number. And, again, they will be there well after we leave you at 9 o'clock here on uh, Talk Radio 1210 WPHT. 855-839-1210 is the number here. And don't forget, if you miss any of today's show, well, we're going to give it to you again this afternoon at 4 it's our Health Watch replay, 4 until 5 this afternoon here on Talk Radio 1210 WPHT. If you have a question for Dr. Molly right now, it's a good time to jump in, 
Uh, we're going to talk about some of your patients sure. and uh, how they're doing. Well, you know, two of, two of my patients from Indiana went home uh, this week, and I still have two more here. So uh, the two that went home, one you know, one nice lady, she's just a great lady, she has breast cancer. She's had breast cancer for 11 years. Wow. And she refused to do any conventional treatment, any. She didn't want to have surgery. She didn't want to have – so – Obviously, I'm, I am so blessed to have wonderful people who, who uh, nurses who are working with me, who have the same vision that I do. And uh, we help this patient manage her, her, her uh, tumor because, you know, the problem with breast tumors is they tend to come out on the tissue, you know. And we've been helping her man- maintain it, keep it clean. Thank God, no infection. And we're doing this from afar, by the way. I hate to use a Skype or whatever the heck it is, but my nurses really did a wonderful job. My techs did a wonderful job uh, with this patient. They're just loving. So we've managed to continue this. Her family, of course, encouraged her to do traditional treatment. She doesn't want to do it. Now, she does have METs to uh, the bone and has had that for several years. She comes back to me usually once every three months, but now she's been coming back a little long, a little shorter because, you know, managing the pain, et cetera. And I will tell you, though, what's interesting. Um, it seems like her METs in the bone that has been there for several years doesn't seem to be worse, and that's based on radiology. Now, again... <sighs> I encourage her still to look for some conventional treatment that might help reduce the tumor burden. She doesn't want to do it. Now, she's a woman in her 70s. She doesn't want to do it. You know, but here's a case that maybe if she had gotten in earlier, and although she has 11, and I I wish her nothing. I mean, again, I believe that she's in God's hands, right? I believe that. But you know what? I know we could have done more for her had we gotten in this case 11 years ago rather than in the last two years, you know? So what what would you have done? Well, I probably would have encouraged her to have surgery, definitely. And I think she thought that wasn't an option. I think the care she was getting out there wasn't the greatest. But I would have encouraged her to have, get it out because I believe then she didn't have to do, possibly wouldn't have to do any of the more virulent type of chemotherapies, that kind of thing. Again, I meet patients where they are. She's not the first patient I've had who doesn't want to do conventional. My job is to support her nutritionally, help her manage her pain in a natural way. Again, we're not big on opioids or, um, you know, morphine, that kind of thing. My docs are not the doctors to do that. We would send her to, um, you know, uh, hospice or palliative care. If she needs it, they can order that. And that's then taken over by the palliative care physician. But what I will tell people is that she really feels that we're holding her where she is, she said this pain is bearable for her, and I thank God every day. I pray for her every day. She's a wonderful lady. So that's one of my patients. Okay. Uh, you wanted to talk about uh, a patient with GI problems? Yeah. Now, also, her son has GI problems. And uh, this is an interesting thing because what we did was we ran something called uh, food sensitivities, not food allergies, because the allergy uh, data came back negative. He he is not allergic to anything on the allergy panels. He doesn't have celiac disease. That's the big one. Everybody's worried about celiac. You know how many people we test for celiac that don't have celiac? A lot. But you know what they do have? They have food sensitivities. And they have food sensitivities to a multiple amount of, of substances. For example, I did a recent study on a young woman who's in her 30s. She had 15 different spices that she had a sensitivity to. And she tells me she uses at least five to seven of those in every meal. Well, would that give her some digestive upset? You bet. And how do we look at that? Well, we treat this with low-dose naltrexone as well as the IV therapies that then tend to help the GI tract. But isn't that an interesting thing? In other words, if you have a multitude of sensitivity, right, if you use them all together, you don't think you're going to have a reaction, John? You Uh, bet you will. You bet you will. Could you explain briefly 
What's the difference between a food allergy and a food sensitivity? Well, a, a food allergy gives you an absolute allergic reaction, okay? In other words, your throat tightens up, you, you get all the classic symptoms of that, and maybe one drop of the food allergy would do this. A food sensitivity means you have a low-level reaction to it, a very low level or a low-level reaction to it. But think about putting five to seven of these foods in your body or substances in your body at one time. You might then have a more pronounced uh, kind of reaction, still not a not an allergic reaction, but a more pronounced where you have GI pain, GI, you just don't feel right, bloating, those kinds of things. Think about that. And that's something I'm a big believer in. You've got to look at the sensitivities, not just the allergies, because you may not be allergic to this. People tell me they're allergic to their dog. You turn out that they have a sensitivity, and then I find out they have three pets in the house. Well, okay, <laughs> you're going to have a reaction. So these are the things you want to look. They're nuances, but they're important, but they can be helped. You uh, were also telling me that you had a resurgence of COVID? Yes. Oh, my gosh, John. I, COVID, 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 COVID. And is it true COVID? Now they're telling us that they may not test. They don't test. They test positive once and then they test negative. It's because they've either built up the antibodies. But a lot of my people that are having this resurgence of COVID have taken the booster shots. Well, duh, I don't know. You know, RNA is supposed to be the greatest and the next best greatest thing out there. Look, I don't tell you don't take the shots. I don't encourage you to take them. Bottom line, it's individual decision. But I am seeing more and more of this resurgence. And do we have a post-COVID protocol? Of course we do, and people do uh, fairly well on it. And real quick, uh, two more out-of-town patients? Yeah, week? they're this week. They're here and uh, severe depression, which I, in this young man's uh, situation, he's only 27 years old. He was driven by the ED, uh, 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 the ED symptom that he got from his antidepressants, but I ensured him that he should not get off his antidepressants, but we are working with him to improve the ED outcome, which is happening already. But also, I want to improve his brain chemistry so that maybe he can go down on the antidepressant. Don't throw it away. When you need it, you need it. And we test to see what antidepressant is good for his genetic makeup. That's very important because, you know, many times you roll through a series of antidepressants until you find the one that works for you. He wasn't on the antidepressants, and he, now he is? He is on the antidepressant, which I encourage him to take. But it's it's was really... Uh, Proof that his genetic makeup was he was a rapid metabolizer on the old one. Now he's a normal metabolizer on the new one. And we spoke to his psychiatrist and he said, oh, yeah, change it. So, And with that, we are going to put the wraps on another edition of Health Watch. Don't forget, operators standing by at Innovative Medical Associates and the number 856-489-0505. They will be there well after we leave you this morning at 9 o'clock, 856 856- Four eight nine zero five zero five. In fact, they'll be there all day. Let's face it; they're they're working. Eight five six four eight nine zero five zero five. The website innovativemedicalassociates.com, innovativemedicalassociates.com. And don't forget, if you miss any of today's show or you just want to hear it again, we are on again this afternoon, four to five. The Health Watch replay here on Talk Radio twelve ten WPHT. For Dr. Molly Fantasia and everyone at Innovative Medical Associates, the lovely Linda and our nursing staff, Barbara, Lana, Donna, Daniel, and Vicki, and there, of course, Joanne, fabulous Fran, delightful Dee, and our medical assistant, Sandra. I'm your host, John DeMassey. Thank you for listening. We'll do it again next Sunday. Health Watch, 8 till 9, here on Talk Radio 1210, WPHT. You take care.
This program is paid for by Innovative Medical Associates. All opinions or statements expressed on the program are solely those of Innovative Medical Associates or their guests and do not reflect the opinions of WPHT or Odyssey.